G'day and welcome to a, another video on a legal study teacher reads the news. Thought I'd do a bit of consumers this afternoon slash this evening. And I jumped on ABC News. It's a website that uh, you don't need a subscription for because the taxpayer pays for it. And I've just scrolled down and it's all coronavirus, COVID-19, lots and lots of coronavirus. And I'm looking for consumer things. And I found an interesting little article that I thought would be good for us to look at. ASIC warns real estate agents against advising tenants to access super to pay rent. Let's have a look at what this is talking about. It's by Stephen Long, Gavin Coote, and Daniel Ziffer. Cracking last name there. ASIC warns real estate agents against advising tenants to access superannuation to pay rent. The corporation, corporate watchdog, that's ASIC, has intervened to stop real estate agents advising tenants struggling to pay rent to withdraw money from their superannuation, warning that those who do so could face hefty fines and jail time for unlicensed financial advice against people's best interests. So what's happening here? So the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, okay, so this is basically a, a watchdog that looks at companies and ensures that companies are doing what they're supposed to do. It's an independent watchdog. Uh, it, it gives advice, it warns, it kind of um, tells the government to take companies to court if they're doing the wrong thing. Uh, it has written to real estate agents to, in each state calling on them to pass on the letter to all members as a matter of priority. The action comes after numerous reports of real estate agents demanding that tenants, i.e. people that are renting houses, access their superannuation before they'll be considered for rent relief. ASIC's Executive Director of Financial Services Enforcement, Tim Mullally, warned in the letter that the actions of real estates could breach the Corporations Act. Okay, so we'll come back to that, the Corporations Act. Tenants facing financial difficulty need sound financial guidance and potentially debt counselling, specifically pointing them to and recommending them to consider the specific possibility of accessing superannua superannuation is likely to amount to a breach of the Act, he wrote. As part of the federal government's COVID-19 economic response package, the Australian Tax Office is putting in place measures to allow people affected by COVID-19 to access their superannuation early, up to $10,000 in 2019-20 and a further $10,000 in 2020-21. Now, this might be a good time to talk about superannuation and the point of it. Okay, so this, this idea, some of you may not be aware of it. So superannuation was an idea that was put in place by Paul Keating, Prime Minister Keating, and the idea was if all of the Australian taxpayers get old, which hopefully they will, and they retire, they're going to need help in order to live. That's called the old age pension. And he, he reasoned that as the baby boomers get older, there's so many of them that when they retire, we're not going to be able to afford to pay them. They're having less kids and, and the taxpayers of the future simply will not be able to afford a full Age, uh, old age pension for this generation. So what they did was set up a scheme where they forced employers to put 9% of your pay into an account, which would, in the future, when you reach 65, you would receive in full. And basically what happened was it's taxed at a much lower rate and it's kind of enforced savings for everyone that works. If you have a full-time job or a part-time job, you receive superannuation from your employer. It's 9%, it's gone up to 9.5%, eventually it'll go up to 12%. And what it basically does is it allows the government to not have to pay that age old pension for everyone. It actually allows you to, uh, to use a lot of your own money, especially if you contribute extra to it early on. It's a good tax incentive. It's also a good tax incentive when you get a bit older, putting money in there so you're taxed at a lower rate, especially if you're earning a lot of money. And it's you saving money. So, so this idea of, of using up to $10,000 in 2019 and 2020 and another $10,000 in 2020, 2021 might be helpful in the short term, but it's actually going to cost you a lot of money, especially if you're younger. If you've got 20 or 30 years extra work life in you, that $10,000 is going to be adding to itself and adding to itself and adding to itself uh, with interest throughout the decades and that's a lot of money so so this is a kind of a, a desperate act 
And basically ASIC is, is saying, let's continue, is aware that some real estate agents are advising tenants who are unable to pay their rent or who may find themselves in such a situation in future to consider applying for early release of their superannuation, the regulator wrote, describing this as of significant concern. Despite PM Morrison promising a six month moratorium, that means stop, on residential evictions, ABC Radio's AM program found some people who had lost their jobs had been getting letters from their real estate agents, urging them to consider using their superannuation to pay the rent. When COVID-19 restrictions saw Chris, so this is an example where we basically, they've, they've talked about what's happening. This is what they do in newspaper articles all the time. Then they give a specific example to support the claim they've just made. So this is Chris, asked for his surname to be withheld, laid off from his job. He's a Brisbane hospitality worker. Uh, he tries to stay positive, et cetera, et cetera. This is often where, they, where there's a bit of a tug of the heartstrings when they're, when they're trying to show just how bad the situation is. But an, an email from his real estate agent this week got him worried. I received a letter basically stating, please check your super, check your flak mates. Any missed payments, any late payments will go straight on your rental record. As in, uh, it'll look bad for him if he wants to rent somewhere else. So it was kind of like a thinly veiled threat that despite what the government's saying, you've still got responsibilities. We don't care about your plight, he said. Despite us not being able to evict you in six months, this is all going on your record. And once six months is up, you're on your own, big fella. That's Chris. The email seen by AM arrived in Chris's inbox less than an hour after Mr. Morrison announced the moratorium on evictions. So there you go. That's uh, that's quick work by the real estate agents to make sure they keep getting paid. It went on to warn tenants that they would still owe money after the moratorium and details such as their ability to access their superannuation would be noted on their rental history. So that's something that's looked at when you're trying to get a, another house to rent. Chris said the email made him feel concerned. Fair enough. It made me feel a little bit like a little bit sick as soon as I saw it, like especially with everything else going on. The last thing people should be concerned about is a secure roof over their head, he said. Chris has been assured he would be able to return to his hospitality job, job when things got back to normal. But he worries what other issues he will encounter on the other side of COVID-19. No evictions does help. It certainly does. But it also adds stress to, well, what happens after that six months, he said. So that hasn't been clarified by anyone. Well, it has by the real estate. You certainly owe the money and you could be in trouble next time you try and find a property to rent. Real estate agents who advise tenants to access their super could face a maximum of five years imprisonment and or a fine of up to $126,000. Agencies, as in the if the company itself, the real estate agency, could face fines of up to $1.26 million. ASIC intends to monitor this situation closely and if contraventions of the licensing requirements of the Corporations Act are found, ASIC will not hesitate to act swiftly to protect vulnerable consumers, it warned in the letter to state, to state real estate institutes. Okay, so what we see here is the idea that if you're gonna be a real estate agent, you have to get a license. You have to prove that you're a, a proper and fit company and that you have to ensure that license is up to date and that you're doing everything under the Corporations Act to protect consumers. Because if you think about it, we're buying houses, we're selling houses, we're renters. The real estate agents often have all the power. So this is a government regulator, ASIC, ensuring it's looking after consumers. It's actually a really good article for if you're doing the consumers topic. Emails from inner city Melbourne agency Buxton Real Estate told an unknown number of newly unemployed tenants who cannot pay rent to inquire about accessing the superannuation before the agents would even contact the owners of the properties to ask for a reduction in the rent. If you are unable to pay rent, please contact your property manager to discuss the documentation you need to provide to us before we contact your owner regarding your situation, said a message sent from the head of property management, Ray Tolley, on Tuesday. In the meantime, we strongly recommend you inquire regarding your eligibility for early access to superannuation. See, that is dodgy as, yeah? Uh, it's basically saying, we're not gonna let you contact the owner. You have to first prove to us that you've done everything in your power, perhaps even working out if you're eligible for early access to superannuation before we let you talk to the owner of your property. Other examples of agents comp compelling renters to access their superannuation as a first resort can be found on social media. Each of the emails could constitute a separate breach of the act. Nathan Jones, chief executive of Buxton Real Estate Group said the email 
lists financial options currently available to tenants and is based on federal government advice. It is an individual's discretion to, to access which option is right for them, he said. Mm. Our focus is to work alongside and maintain positive relationships with all our tenants and landlords at Buxton, particularly during this stressful time. We are doing our best to keep our tenants informed and will continue to assist any experiencing financial distress as much as possible. You can tell that someone received an email from the ABC about this and had to think quickly about what they were doing. The statement from the company did not respond to the seriousness of the potential breaches or the potential sanctions the company as agents could face. Real Estate Institute of Australia President Adrian Kelly said agents should not be providing financial advice to anyone as that's illegal. Financial advice must only be provided by qualified and licensed financial advisors or financial counsellors, he said. Agents can give guidance to a tenant as to where information regarding their financial affairs is available, such as the ASIC Money Smart website, as well as the government announcements about assistance in the current crisis. Thankfully, today, we will receive some government announcements around tenants and property owners, which will lay the ground rules so we can start to clean up some of this mess. Okay, so what's happening here? Basically, the Corporations Act, I went and found it. It's there if you want to have a read. Uh, from memory, I had a look here. Uh, Wikipedia says it's 3,354 pages, so you may not want to, uh, to, to tuck in too much. But basically, it sets out the laws dealing with business entities in Australia at federal and interstate level. Okay, primarily with companies, but also partnerships and managed investment schemes. So basically, it's where we get our corporation law. So, so the Corporations Act basically states that the only people who are allowed to give financial advice to consumers are people who are licensed uh, finance officers, whatever, whatever they're called, financial advisors. And they are actually held to a standard where uh, the law says they have to provide what is in the best interest to that consumer. So the law's changed a few times, actually. I can't remember where it's up to at the moment. Uh, it was a law that was placed in by Labor, and then the coalition uh, loosened that law and said that's not necessarily the case. And I think it's actually been since been switched up and, uh, and tightened up again. But the concept is a financial advisor is supposed to say to the customer, I am only going to give you this advice because it's the best advice for you. As opposed to, I'm getting a commission, I'm getting paid by another company to give you this other advice, even though that's actually not best for you. Put into this article, basically what's happening is real estate agents who are not licensed to give financial advice can't write a letter and say, hey, guess what? This is something you should think about doing because that's financial advice. And it's financial advice, as I explained, which would actually be terrible for someone who's renting taking $10,000 out of their low tax superannuation to pay for their rent now if they've got 30 or 40 years of working ahead of them is simply terrible advice. And so that's why ASIC has jumped on this as soon as possible. The corporate watchdog has, has sent a thing to all real estate agents saying, hey, if you do this, we will fine you. It is against the law. You may get fined. You may go to jail. If you're an agency, we're looking at a million dollar one and a quarter million dollars in fines, okay, huge. Okay, so that's a, that's a helpful little article that I thought you guys might um, be able to use when you're thinking about consumer law, because it's the idea of protecting consumers using ASIC, a corporate watchdog. It's talking about licensing, it's talking about financial advisors, and it's talking about real estate in the age of COVID-19. It's got everything, check it out, save this. This is the URL here. Print it out somewhere, keep it there, and make sure you learn about it. All right, that's enough from me. Over and out.